Um, this is the third session of uh, interviews for the UOWM KDU Digital Summer Showcase 2020. So um, as you can tell, I'm the only person with video at the moment, which is fine. Um, and we are going to be discussing some of the stuff about the final year project program. So basically, it's like uh, during the game development program, you have several project semesters. And after going through GPS 1, and then you go through GPS 2, then you get a semester for break. And then you basically start on your final year project, even though the semester is focused on the research methodology, technically, like you are also doing your final year project at the same time, because these two things, they kind of like work together, basically. And I'm really excited, especially because uh, I'm doing my final year project right now. So this is pretty great. So anyway, um, we have two of the lecturers who helped to oversee the work of the FYP. And uh, I'd like you both to introduce yourselves. So we'll start with Mr. Jason. Please state your name, um, the subjects that you teach or oversee, and what you did before becoming a lecturer at KDU. Hi, my name is Jason. Uh, mainly, I'm teaching the... Hello. Hi, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Soft, Jason. I think my line is not stable. Well, oh. um, I just want to share with you, my name is Jason. Uh, actually, uh, I'm mainly teaching the game. Um, can you hear us? We are not picking anything up from your side. Yeah, I think my line has got some problem. That's why I just now got some delay. I also can't hear from Sophia as well. Okay, so oh, I just repeat uh, again. Okay, so my name is Jason. Uh, mainly, I'm teaching the games programming related module. Uh, beside that, I also handling for the research methodology and also helping some of the colleague uh, like Shen together uh, handling for the final year project thesis. Uh, Mr. Shen, same questions. Introduce yourself, um, the subjects you teach, and then also uh, what you did before the lecturing at KDU. Oh. Uh, my name is Shen Chong, and I cover a handful of them. One of them is uh, Fundamentals of Game Development, which is the very first semester. Most people will come through uh, four of them. I mean, I'm covering one of those modules. I also work on a narrative, game narrative, how, how to instill uh, narrative frameworks into a game construct. And the other ones will be the combination of research methodology and finding a project. Now, technically, like, considered the same one chunk because it's essentially pre-production production of the same project. So that's what I, I lecture on. Uh, before KDU, I was working as a game designer and writer in a studio, E1 Studio, which was based in KL Central. I was there for five years, uh, overseeing a team, working on a narrative. And at the same time, I'm also a freelance writer for scripts. So I do TVs and shows. I generally uh, writing related projects. So that was what I was doing. And I'm still doing writing while I'm lecturing. But my game uh, career was based on that 30, 30 to 40 person studio in KL Central itself. Wow, that's a decently sized studio. <laughs> that's one of the larger ones I know for, wow. for a non uh, outsourcing studio. OK, all right. So. Um... Uh, I might be directing more of my questions towards Mr. Shun since uh, Mr. Jason's connection is still a little bit unstable. Uh, I hope that's all right. But uh, basically, so the final year project is different from the GPS 1 and 2 projects yeah, yeah, in okay, the sense no where um, you get more free reign over like what you get to do. You get to pitch like everything without having um, any of the restrictions that are set by the lecturers. The restrictions that you get are set basically by yourself and the team that you work with. So um, 
when students pitch the games for their FYP, um, what are things that you look out for that makes you think that the pitch is going to work? Uh, Mr. Shun. So there were, for me at least, uh, three general things I look out for. So what happened is that during the pitch, so imagine there's this hall where teams will come forward and they'll present their game. And it's just one, it's just one pitch. Because normally in the previous earlier modules, they pitch a handful and then one will be picked. In this case, we asked them that if this was something that you're going to do closer to a studio environment, you normally would just have one to bring up on. So they will come up as a team and you cover that. Several lecturers, if possible, the entire body of lecturers will be in that room listening because there will be another purpose to it, which I'll cover in a bit. But more, more importantly, like when we are listening to it, uh, you are correct to say that we are not going to say no to the projects because the idea being that they have a lot of control in the scope and style and nature of what they want to do. Three things I tend to ask because of my background as a designer and writer is that number one, do you know what kind of play experience the game is going to be? Because knowing your play experience solves a lot of the creative problems that you will encounter through the six months you will have in building this game. Because you will come a point where you have good choices and bad choices. It's easier to make. But when you have decent choices, decent choice number one, decent choice number two, becomes harder to choose because you're thinking both feel good. Which one can I pick? That's where the player experience becomes very useful. So the teams who actually do know how to uh, hone in on player experience tend to have a better pitch. The second thing I tend to look for is that are the teams having the right reason for making that game? And that's, that's normally something they tend to share as individuals when they're pitching. And the third component is they didn't know their game pillars. Those things tend to be the primary not necessarily just the core mechanics, but primary features of the game that makes it what it is. If they know what those pillars are, they can build around it and they can build for it because that tends to take up a lot of their RM time. The research methodology is a pre-production to research how to build those pillars and are those feasible pillars to work when they move into the next module. So those for me are the three. That's really interesting. So um, I just want to quickly plug that the FYP games are available for download. Uh, you can go to uowm.itch.io and you can try out all of the FYP games, including mine, which is Don't Stop the Party. Um, we have some really good stuff this semester for both mobile and PC, so do check them out. So um, next, I just want to ask Mr. Jason about um, the RM phase. So mm -hmm. when you... Um, students are working on their research methodology um how do you help them pick a good topic uh regarding to the research methodology topic actually it depends on the final year project mm -hmm. so like what kind of games you are doing and then from there right so we are trying to help the student to identify what are the major problem they're going to face like for example so your your task is being assigned is like you're going to um design a uh, horror games for example then you want we want to look for right so what kind of the horror factor that is really uh, make can make the immersive uh, gameplay for the player so therefore you need to go for that direction and do the research so it depends on what are the major tasks being assigned to each student so then when the student doing for the research on that particular area Actually, right. So eventually, at the end, so they're able to get all the related information and also improve the design of the games and so on. So, but um, you need to know about what is your game first and also what is your major task being assigned to you. Can you tell us about any really unique topics that you've seen over the years during the research methodology? Uh, well, um, in terms of for the um, design, so I come across right. So come some of the very interesting topic like the uh, monetization model. So because now uh, we know that so we creating games. Okay, our purpose is to be able to create the revenue. So and then so we have a lot of the different uh, monetization model. Okay, for the games. Um, so the student is really uh, doing quite a good job. So actually, they are trying to study the existing one. So what kind of the monetization methods, okay, and the approach they are using uh, for different type of games, and then they're going to do the comparison, and then they find out, okay, so which one is suitable for uh, the FIP games. And then in terms of the technology, actually, uh, quite interesting is like the camera view. So because currently I got, uh, the student is doing for the 2D and 3D uh, view type of games, they are 
turning the camera view right from 2D to 3D and back to 3D to 2D. So then take kind of the transitions and moving for the camera. So from different uh, platform, like from 2D to 3D, actually is very interesting. And the student did find out a lot of the different approaches and they test it accordingly. So that is some of the very interesting topic that's come up from the student. That's very interesting, especially because it shows what um, the priorities of the students are. Like yeah. you can kind of see what they're really focusing on when it comes to their project, like what they think is something that is worth um, doing more research into, right? I think that's yeah. Cool. Actually, uh, we 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 also encourage the student right. So when you pick up for your final year project, okay, actually you need to set your ultimate goal. Like for example, the games that you create, okay, is not for yourself. Actually, you need to study the markets, okay. So if let's say you are doing for com uh, commercialization, so then what kind of your target audience and also what is the latest uh, trend, okay? So for from the markets, and then if you aiming the final project for the competition, so you need to know about. So the competitions uh, judging criteria, the expectations, so then they're able to work uh, towards to that direction. Or even some of the individual final project, they can do something like proof of concept, like the new technique, the new design, new approach, and so on. That's really cool about the, the target market because also uh, one of the first things that we do during Fundamentals of Game Development, I still remember in my first sem, was that we had to create a profile for a sort of like an ideal target market or customer. So um, in a way, it's like you have to bring that knowledge with you over into the the research methodology semester, the yeah. final year project semester. It's, just, it's kind of nice that it ties back into each other. So yeah. um, my next question is for Mr. Shern. So uh, when you're overseeing the FYP students, um, have you noticed like there's a common pattern between some of the students? Like there are some teams, maybe if they're big, they will always end up having um, a long pre-production phase, maybe. Or some teams, if they're really just small, like solo, maybe they will be struggling in like one particular aspect of the game as opposed to the other ones. So one of the things that I tend to notice, uh, I won't say it's a trend, I'll just say it's more of a pattern. The pattern is that the more uh, qualitative their game is, the more research they need. And that normally tends to take time. So I'll give an example. Uh, you would think that a, a bigger team would take a longer time to prep, uh, which is normally true for an operational perspective because there are just more people and more teams to manage. But say, for example, if their game was just about uh, a fighting game and it's in pixel art and it's based in, in KL, so if they can just get research for pictures of, of KL City itself, that that is and it's something they're really familiar with, so their prep is a bit more straightforward. So, but that's like a team of fifteen, for example. So, even for the size, it's still quite quick. But if you have a two or three member team and they want to look into Romanian gypsy environments and culture, their research can take weeks because of how qualitative they need to do theirs. So, size here to follow Yoda matters not. <laughs> uh, it is more of the, the depth of the material they want to translate. Because essentially in design, we always talk about how as, when you're making a game, you're bringing real life into a digital construct. Right. So when you're trying to do a simulation of that, the more qualitative it will be, the more research it requires. That's pretty interesting. So it just goes to show how important the um the pre-production or even the pre-pre-production phase of game development actually is because you're really setting the foundation for what you're about to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So um, next, I just want to focus on the current FYP semester, if possible, because um, our batch, my batch in particular, very sentimental. We are not necessarily the biggest batch, and we do have some students who have joined us from, they weren't with us in our first semester, basically. And the games are all over the place in the best way. You know, we have a Kairosoft uh, similar kind of simulation game about a Kopitiam. And then we also have a online mobile multiplayer game. And then also we have two combat-centric games, but one with a more semi-realistic 
uh, sort of like Sekiro near Automata inspired combat type of game. And then we have another one that is focusing on local co-op, uh, well, local couch co-op multiplayer combat, basically, with like fun characters and all that. So all of these teams have had very different journeys. And uh, Mr. Shern, I was wondering if you could share any interesting stories of development from this current batch of FYP students. Okay, so um, let's see if I can condense this. So I'll go with, we have two larger teams and two smaller teams in terms of games. There are two other artists who are doing their own environmental art showreel. In this case, for the context of the game itself, um, I will cover on uh, trying to go for what makes each one what they are. So I think as a whole, first, I must say that I appreciated that this batch were willing to take the risks. They were willing to find out what is it that they want to build on, and they were willing to try to build towards that. So the two small teams, uh, the Kopi Tam team, what I appreciate was that they wanted to find something that's localized, the coffee shop, how to build uh, a management around it. How do you actually run a Malaysian coffee shop? So I thought that was something that was worth their time to really look into and to try, and it's on mobile. Because quite a few studios who come through will require to work in such projects where it's actually played mostly on your device. So they were willing to go through that. And I thought that was very, very cool. The other one took on the idea of like, this is going to be a online a multiplayer. And they went through the entire effort of making it feel like it's a, there's a business back end to it. They looked into how to have the gacha moments to have the ability to rank up your, your player account, to buy coins, to go in at purchases. They were doing the whole shebang. And I thought that was actually very, very gutsy of them. And it was very sporting because they were really trying to understand if I would walk into a studio right now and they want to know how to build a business out of that game, they were using the FYP's time as an opportunity to build that capacity, which is partly true because it's something that once you're finished with FYP, you move into internship. Technically, you're already working in a studio with the hope that if you like the studio, the studio will offer you a letter appointment by the end of the semester. So it is good thinking to think about how they want to link up to that. The two larger teams, I think what was going on with them is that they were looking at what is it that they can do to push themselves. So the fighting games, the biggest thing about fighting games is you've got to make the controls very small. The player experience is very kinetic. The ability to take up information and apply it very quickly on the fly is something that it's, it's a very subtle, high octane speed of processing. Being able to build user interface around that requires so much playtesting and they were really willing to do that and they went through the entire phase of how do we build this japanese inspired fighting game within a context of it's going to be played from controller and then the last game which is your team's game uh <laughs> i think right now it's the only party game i can think of that's a uh, local uh, couch party and your team went through quite a lot of good prep in terms of making sure the characters were outstanding, each of them had their own thing going on. At the same time, making sure that the, the tone of the game was still about party. Because you knew that the people playing this were probably at a party themselves. And the game itself is a matter on that party. And how do you play together against each other? So these four directions, to me, were a good indication that this semester's batch were willing to listen to what is it that they want to do. And they were willing to put in the work to get there. I mean, like, have you seen our game recently? Now we have AI, so yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, of the it. yeah, the nature of the playtest is as such that you know we realize that <clears throat> people may not be physically together. So uh, our tech side, shout out to to all of the techs on my side, especially, um, pulled together like really good AI. Surprisingly, it, it makes for a very good um, game. So you could check it out. Uh, to everybody who's interested, again, you can download the games and play them for yourself at uowm.itch.io. Um, and then also you can come by our Discord and chat with the developers and test out the games for yourself and everything there. It's a lot of fun. So, um, I mean, that's great. I love I love being praised for my hard work, considering we were bug fixing until like <laughs> 12. Just now. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it was a whole thing. I love game development. Woo! Okay. So... Um, my next question is for Mr. Jason. Yeah. You mentioned that you also teach some of the programming subjects, right? Yeah. Um, 
what are some of the questions that the FYP programming students tend to ask you? Because now they get to do like whatever they want. So I'm sure you've gotten some very interesting questions from these students. Uh, well, so um, from the uh, year one until the final year, okay, most of the tech student being uh, taught in uh, all the uh, required algorithm and also the technique. So, um, I mean, the major issue they face, right, many is about the uh, the algorithm. Sometimes, right, so um, the the uh, logical okay, of the, the program and also some of the technical skill. So like for example, right, so some of the game engine actually is a commercial engine that a lot of the function is given. But however, the basic function given by the engine itself right, is not enough to solve some of your designer requests, you know, some of the uh, level design or some of the mechanic. So therefore, they need to like optimize it. They need to uh, customize okay, so to, in order to solve the problem. So that is the major um, questions that you're going to ask me okay so uh, during for the development it's the customizations yeah like have they ever come to you with something that maybe they didn't realize was possible within the engine because it's like some of the students will be working with unity which they've been using through yeah. all the project semesters and then some of them will come to you and say that we decided to work with unreal and it's their first time ever using the engine and they want to do something really, really triple A. So uh, actually yeah. the engine right, is like the tools. Okay. So but if you know about the the logical uh uh, think, uh I mean the computational thinking, okay, and also some of the algorithm, actually is applied to any platform. The only changes is about some of the configuration and some of the programming syntax. And also like Unity using the C sharp and then the Unreal using the C plus. And yet, so these two programming languages that we did cover, okay, so from the year one until the final year. So we did cover uh, the C sharp in the 2D programming uh, subject. We cover the C plus, right, for multiple programming subject as well. So with the fundamental, okay, and then so it's not a major problem for them to convert, okay, so from the Unity to the Unreal. So our aim, right, so is to teach the tech student, okay, so you can work with any engine. So therefore, in the FNA project, actually, so we are open up for the student. So you can choose any engine that you like. So if you're facing any problem, that we will sit down together and we discuss about the algorithm and the solutions. It's not the programming languages, you know. So therefore, right, so uh, I think so far, most of our students, right, so when choosing for the Unreal Engine, I think they can handle properly, okay, so because of uh, the guideline given and also the resources given by the Unreal Engine, so it's sufficient for them with the basic knowledge they got. As long as they have um, the computational thinking, they should be able to work with any engine that they decide to use for their FYP. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the main challenges, I think, will be because maybe at start, starting point, they're not familiar with the, the uh, overall, the IDE, you know, it means the platform, okay, and also some of the configurations and also the setup, you know. So because different engines, right, they have their different way to, uh, to apply, okay, for those things. So therefore, so if you have the basic knowledge that we uh, taught from the year one until now, so it's sufficient for them, right, so to overcome this all problem interesting yeah so i mean like because um there are some um there are some programmers i'm sure who think that as long as they're familiar with the language they will be fine in working on their games but it is really important to have the the problem solving skills and the computational thinking and everything that's yeah. how you really make it work right yeah, because the programming languages right just like a command to tell mm -hmm. the compiler to tell the engine right, what to do you know, so like for example, when you're speaking to, for your native language, okay, and also English, right? Actually, we we just refer to the same thing, but we use using different language, you know. So, but at the same, right? So we refer to the same meaning. So that is the point. Okay, all right. So, um, I think that this is gonna be my last question. So, uh, we'll start with Mr. Shun. The FYP students are going to be well, the most of them anyway are going to be entering their internship phase, uh, with the upcoming semester. You know, of, of course, like the MCO is a whole thing and we don't know what's going to happen there and that's terrifying uh but I mean aside from that basically the students are about <laughs> to enter like the working world for all intents and purposes all these years of um of study and development they are all going to they've come to a head with this semester and 
we're going to be out there and doing the whole studio thing if possible. Do you have any words of advice, uh, any parting words with the students, specifically with this batch, I guess, that you would like to share? So the capacity to appreciate that the game studio, like any organization, it's a team-based thing. So even though you're interviewing as an individual, you're entering a group of people. And your ability to work as a team right now is going to be particularly useful for you and enlightening when you actually enter that studio. They're going to hope that you can flow into their work culture, pick out the processes, and be able to do your craft. So it's true that having good craft is very important. This whole point of this three years, but not just good craft, but you are able to also understand, appreciate process and contribute to it and grow that process because you're technically a community inside a studio. And to actually have a conceptual framework that every studio member holds up to and they have a set of values that are together, uh, that kind of mutual support and encouragement, that's actually pretty important. Like even though, let's say we are the two artists, they're doing their own art, they're doing yeah, as they individuals right now, solo, together, but the moment they enter the studio, uh, that kind of mutual they're going to be valued as members of a team. So I just want the batch to realize and appreciate and acknowledge you have the capacity as a craft, but at the same time, to also appreciate that your ability to work in a team and to be in a process, the ability to have the patience and resilience, that's going to really count. OK, all right, that's great. And um, Mr. Jason, do you have any like um, advice for the students who are going to go start working? Um, please work according timeline. <laughs> That is very, very important, you know, so because it showed that so our student, right, not only good in uh, technical, you know, so but also good in discipline. This is very, very important, okay, to the industry. The thing is like, it's on a plan. You got you to gotta do the thing. So yes. that's good advice. <laughs> and um, I just want to plug that uh, if you're interested, anybody out there watching, if you're interested to hear the students, the developer side on how they were able to pull off their FYPs, you can go to anchor.fm forward slash SCCM showcase. There are interviews with not only the teams, but also with the two solo students who did sci-fi environmental work and it was fantastic to look at. So do check it out. And um, I think actually that about wraps it up. Thank so, you, Sophie. Yeah, no, thank, you, thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank yeah. you, viewers. Oh, I'll too. see you soon, whenever. Yeah, go play our games. Go check out our games on the Discord okay. server. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.